Susan's about to play a game of chess with a difference. Okay, why don't you be white? Okay, uh, E4. E4. C5. Knight to C3. Susan's friend Ed has the chessboard in front of him, just like a normal game. Knight C6. But Susan doesn't need it. She's playing the game in her head. The only board she needs is in her mind's eye. F5. Now you gotta be careful. Amateur players like Ed have to see the board to keep track of all 32 chess men. I'll play G5. But Susan follows all the moves using her fundamental chess ability. Memory. Playing without a board helps to train the memory, and Susan has been practicing since childhood. I'm going to sacrifice my knight now. Knight and You're sacrificing a knight? Susan can play up to five games in her head simultaneously. Bishop takes G5. Rook E8. Rook F3. Knight E5. Rook G3. King F8. The queen's moving in for the kill. E to G4. Queen H8 check. Now it's over. King E7. Checkmate. Susan, that's not a nice way to say hello. When it comes to chess, Susan can perform miracles of memory. In fact, she's doing something that should be impossible. An ongoing task, like a game of chess, is handled by a mental function known as working memory at the very front of the brain. The relevant brain cells, or neurons, store any necessary information by forming a network of electrical connections. But these connections die away within seconds. So working memory is limited. It's like a temporary scratch pad that can only store about seven items of information. That's why the seven digits of a new phone number are about as much as most people can remember. But just how good is Susan's working memory? This is Thompson Street in New York, home of the city's sidewalk chess cafes. And we're about to give Susan a memory test. Can she memorize all the pieces and pawns on this diagram? That's 28 items of information. To make things even trickier, the diagram has been pasted to the side of a cafe's speeding van. Susan only has time for a single three-second glance. But watch this. Susan's working memory is working overtime. She's made an exact copy. To explain her miracle of memory, this scientist has come to a very surprising place. The diners at this London restaurant don't know it. But their table is under surveillance. He's proceeding here in a counterclockwise order. Psychologist Anders Ericsson has spent nearly 30 years studying amazing memories. And it doesn't have to be chess grandmasters. More and more, we've been interested in everyday life uh, kind of uh, expert performance. Somebody who can do something that is extraordinary. <laughs> He's expecting a bravura performance from Spanish waiter Vincenti Sancho. I think I have a good memory. I have the, the memory of my grandma. Good afternoon. You, you ready to order? Yes. Yeah. Okay. May I have a mock cranberry, please? Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll take the uh, baby squid risotto. Risotto. Um, They're giving drink orders. 
as well as a meal, but this is going to be challenging for him. Do you have any beer? Only tiger. Okay. Do you have beer? Then can I start off with the nachi with chestnut? Like Susan, Vincenti's working memory has to take in a lot of information. But he never writes anything down. Could I start with the sauteed baby squid, please? And this is going to be a tall order. The question is, how many orders can he handle in working memory? So, it's both a cranberry, a nero risotto on the skate, tiger beer, uh, with the gnocchi on the beef rare. The nero risotto on the monfish and gin tonic. It seems Vincenti can remember far more than seven orders. Wow. Twenty-three orders in all. That's impressive. Like Susan, Vincenti seems to exceed the normal limits of working memory. But how is he doing it? Vincent, that was really impressive. I uh, really want to understand and hear how you were doing this. Now you're coming in. Do you know who you can ask to give you the first order? Yes, it's always the best to, to start from my left. Okay. So to try to keep an order. The first one, so brunette, he has a white top and thin jeans. The second one, blonde, blonde, almost white hair. Do you have any beer? I thought, she's not sure about what to drink, about what uh, to order. It seems that Vincente doesn't remember all 23 orders individually. Instead, he packs the information down to make it manageable using the normal seven items of working memory. I associate the person, the this, and the number. I say it's like all together. I don't know how to explain that it's come all together. He forms a strong mental image of each customer and then attaches that customer's orders to the image. This seems to be a common technique used by experts in all fields. It's called chunking. It is a little like phone numbers. One of my best phone numbers was 4921492. And given that 1492 is when Columbus discovered America, you don't have to keep track of the individual digits any longer. All the four digits will be retrieved as a single group from memory. Susan handles the information on a chessboard in exactly the same way. She doesn't remember all the pieces individually. Instead, she breaks everything down into chunks. The menacing formation of White's Queen and Bishops is one chunk. The heavily protected Black King is another. Susan only has to remember five chunks, easily manageable in normal working memory. But without chunking, her memory is no better than anyone else's. And here's the proof. In the chess diagram on the other side of the van, the pieces have been placed at random by a non-chess player. So this time, there are no recognizable chunks. Now Susan's trying to remember 24 individual pieces. And she can't do it. All the pieces are in random position. It's just so much harder to remember, especially under a very short time. But how does Susan identify chess chunks? To her, they're lifelong friends, memories that were implanted in her brain during her extraordinary childhood. <laughs> 